Hi guys, how are you doing? Whoa, that's noisy. Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. So some of you guys have watched my troubleshooting video on Floyd Rose guitars or any floating tremolo guitars and basically that video helps out you if you are a beginner to Floyd Roses and tells you what you can do to improve that factory setup when it arrives because some guys get their guitar and when they dive down it doesn't return back to the pitch that it should and various other problems like that. If you've not seen that video, then please go down there in the description and watch it. It's a really cool video, and especially for people who've bought a new guitar in particular with a Floyd Rose or a floating tremolo system on it. I got quite a lot of questions from guys saying, right, thank you very much. You really solved my issues on the guitar that I bought. I was gonna send it back when there's nothing wrong with it. I just tightened this, that, and the other up and now it's working great. However, when I use the Floyd Rose, it doesn't sound that great, you know? It doesn't sound like Dan Bag Darrell or Eddie Van Halen or any of the other Floyd uh, users out there. But then I decided to do a video showing you guys some whammy bar tricks, some tremolo tricks that you can use in your own playing. These tricks are mine, what I use quite a lot in videos, especially if I'm demoing like a Jackson guitar that's always usually got a Floyd on. I don't consider myself a whammy bar expert or anything like that. In fact, it's hardly ever screwed in when I'm just playing normally. But when I do demos, obviously I put the whammy bar in to make some noises for you guys so you can see what the guitar is capable of and whether it holds its tuning or not. So I have picked five whammy bar tricks to show you guys. But first of all, I just want to talk about what I'm using here. This is a very cheap rig. Fender Mustang GT40 over there. This is the old version, it's about three years old now. It's just what I use to practice through. It's got Bluetooth and all of that shenanigans on it so I can jam along to my own songs and practice or just improvising using what I use it for. I'll set my phone off going to Bluetooth. It will play some tracks through there and I will just jam along to them and get warmed up. The guitar that I'm using is a Jackson Soloist SLX. It is an X-Series Soloist. It's satin black on the back and it has this wonderful winter camo graphic on the front. The Floyd Rose on this guitar is actually a Floyd Rose Special. I don't have any issue with Floyd Rose Specials at all. Once you get them set up right, they do the job. Yes, they're not made quite as well as say a Floyd 1000 or an original Floyd or a shoulder or any of that business, but they do their job, you know, for me, flawlessly. And that's the reason why I thought I'd use this guitar. I thought I'd use a really affordable rig. So the first thing you need to know if you are wanting to sound like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Dimebag Darrell, Eddie Van Halen, all the guys that do these ridiculous squeals and harmonics and stuff on the guitar, what you need to realize is that if you just plug straight into an amp, you are dry with no effects. Your dive bombs or whatever trem tricks you're trying to do will not sound anywhere near as good as the guys with a ton of reverb and delay on. You don't have to go mad on it really, the delay and the reverb. I've not got that much on and it makes a world of difference, especially to pinched harmonics and dive bombs and uh, other trem tricks out there. So the first thing that we're going to look at is a typical dive bomb. This is my way, my interpretation of it, the one that I use on my channel a lot. It's a bit silly, it's a bit of a silly one. It's not a serious squeal like Dimebag does or anything, you know. Uh, quite often he uses a whammy pedal to take it even higher as well, so when he's pitched back fully on the trem, he'll hit the whammy pedal down, the Digitech whammy pedal, and it will go even higher, an octave higher, uh, and, and he uses that quite a lot. But that's a very extreme and more serious way of doing these. I just do them for fun. So basically, what I do is I usually do these on the G string, the third, you can do them anywhere where there's a harmonic, but I like the fourth fret here. <laughs> I love them. I do them all the time on, on Jackson, because there's not many Jackson or EVH video guitar videos that I do where I've not done that. I'm not bringing it back. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm doing a little pull off, almost just knocking the G string there. I'll dive the trem down first, just a touch. And then you kind of just lightly hit the string like you would as a harmonic. You're not fretting it, you're just touching it. And it takes some time to actually get used to doing this. Tremolo tricks and whammy bar stuff is like any other part of playing. The more you do it, the better you will get. Yeah, it's not great for your mum and dad or for anybody else, your wife, whatever, who lives in the house when they're just listening to a load of racket and a lot of it doesn't sound that good. But 
do it every day. Make sure that you put your honey bar in, screw it in, leave it in the guitar. Because when you take the guitar out and put it in a case, I always think that you can't be bothered screwing the honey bar in. So that's why you don't use it as much. And that's why people aren't quite as good as they should be. So anyway, yeah, so we pull the string off. And then as you hit the harmonic at the bottom, One. I kind of let the bar up, but I'm not letting it up in one go, so I'm not going like, which sounds awesome, obviously a lot of people do that, but I kind of let it up and I take it back down, so uh, I bring it up in like little degrees. So I'm letting it up the bar, but I'm doing it in like kind of a, a little jerk on it. And uh, that's my favorite and most used dive bomb trick. Uh, it's on my new project that I'm doing, TMB project. The actual band is called that. Check that out, links in the description. I'm doing a full EP with Jojo from Pulverize, and I can't wait for that to come out. We've got Luke Hatfield as well on drums on a few of the tracks. It's gonna sound awesome, and it's not what you would expect from me, but yeah. That's tremolo trick number one. Let's move on to tremolo trick number two. I call this one the flap, and this is why. So you will fret a note again, we'll use the G string. Delay and reverb's on there. And you need to hammer the note on. So I hope you can see the actual what I'm doing with the whammy bar on the camera. So when I hammer the note on, it gives my picking hand chance to get away from the strings and to the bar, which I've tilted backwards. Can you see that there? The bar is tilting backwards. I hit the note, then the hammer on, which is with this hand, gives me chance for my hand to get away onto the back of the bar, and then I hit the bar. And it gives it that nice wobbly, wobbly, flappy effect there. I also use this same technique using octaves, so I'll use a power chord now. Uh, I'm gonna use my A string, and then I'm gonna miss a string out, I'm gonna go to the G string and form a power chord, which is an octave. That's a really easy one and a great one for beginners. Tremolo trick number three, this is uh, what I call a Satriani um, dive bomb. It's actually a reverse one. So you have your bar like this in the normal position. You reach around through this gap here where the horn is on. You press the bar down. As you get the bar down, you hit the G and the D string harmonic. And you bring it up like that. Don't forget delay and reverb still on. So the bar goes down. Hit the harmonic on the open D and G. Tremolo trick number four. I use this a lot and I mainly use it when I'm just messing around, waiting for something up to upload or at home or whatever. I got this riff that I actually made up the other day and I'm gonna try and show you it, but I don't really want delay and all that business on, but I hope you get the gist. So what you do is you unscrew the whammy bar and you hold it in your hand and what you are gonna do is you're gonna hold it really loosely like that. Uh, I tend to like to put my finger underneath there, kind of like you're holding a pen and I let the bar fall using its own weight 
onto the strings and bounce up, kind of like when you hit a snare drum and you let the stick bounce up. Uh, I'm letting it do with that, and I'm kind of percussively hitting the string like a bass player would slap it, and then I make a little tune up on the other end of it. So, this little tune I've got here, I hope this works. one that you don't see very much but I like to do that it sounds better in my opinion when you're using just total clean guitar I kind of do that on a clean channel usually I've got a new intro that I totally forgot then that I tried to play for you but never mind you get the gist the last tremolo trick that I'm going to show you today involves hammer-ons on your left hand you leave the bar in that way in like what I call a standard position and you just hammer on. I'm going to use a G string again to keep it simple. You basically dip the bar. You can do it using opens. Oh, you can use it kind of hammering on. And that's channel trick number five. Thank you very much for watching. Leave some comments below. I know I'm not the best whammy bar guy on earth, but they're just some tricks that I like to use when I'm feeling about with my whammy bar. <laughs> oh dear.